Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Neil Brian Galve and today I'm going to walk you through the complete process of inserting a peripheral IV cannula. This is one of the most common procedures performed in healthcare settings. With over 1 billion IVs placed annually worldwide, whether you are a nursing student, a new nurse, or just looking to refresh your skills, mastering this technique is absolutely essential. Have you ever wondered why some healthcare providers can place an IV on the first attempt while others struggle after multiple tries? The difference isn't luck, it's understanding the proper technique, anatomy, and following a systematic approach. By the end of this video, you'll have the knowledge and confidence to improve your first stick success rate. Before we dive in, if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss out on a new clinical skills videos like this one. Let's get started. Understanding Peripheral IV Cannulas Peripheral IV cannula is a thin, flexible tube that allows us to deliver medications, fluids, and blood products directly into a patient's bloodstream. These devices are essential for administering IV medications, providing fluid resuscitation, delivering blood products, drawing blood samples, and maintaining access for intermittent treatments. The most common insertion sites include the dorsum of the hand, forearm veins, and the antecubital fossa. For this demonstration, I'll be showing you a forearm insertion, which is often preferred because it's more comfortable for the patient and less likely to become dislodged. First, let's gather all the supplies we'll need. Appropriate size IV catheter, typically 18 to 24 gauge, tourniquet, alcohol or chlorhexidine swabs, sterile transparent dressing, saline flush, needleless connector, tape for securing, clean gloves, sharps container. The gauge you select depends on your patient's needs. For routine fluid administration, a 20 to 22 gauge is usually sufficient. For rapid fluid resuscitation or blood products, you'll want an 18 gauge. For elderly patients with fragile veins, consider a 22 to 24 gauge. Step 1. Vein Selection Finding a good vein is half the battle. Here's how to locate the best option. Apply the tourniquet about 5 to 10 centimeters above your intended insertion site. Have the patient make a fist to help engorge the veins. Look for straight, bouncy veins that don't roll. Pulsate the vein. It should feel spongy and resilient, not hard or pulsatile. Avoid areas near joints, valves, or previous IV attempts. Pro tips, nurses. If veins are difficult to visualize, try these techniques. Have the patient dangle their arm below heart level. Gently tap over the vein to stimulate dilation. Apply warm compress for a few minutes. Use gravity by having the patient lower their arm. Remember, a vein that you can feel but not see is often better than one you can see but not feel. Step 2. Prepare the site. Proper preparation prevents infection and ensures success. Perform hand hygiene and don clean gloves. Clean the site with an alcohol or chlorhexidine swab starting at the center and moving outward in a circular motion. Allow the site to dry completely. This is crucial for both antiseptic effect and patient comfort. Don't touch the cleaned area after disinfection. Step 3. Insert the cannula. This is the critical moment that requires precision. Remove the protective cap from the cannula. Hold the cannula with the bevel facing up at 15 to 30 degree angle. Use your non-dominant hand to anchor the vein by pulling the skin taut below the insertion site. Inform the patient they'll feel a sharp stick. Insert the needle through the skin and into the vein in one smooth motion. Look for a flashback or blood in the chamber. This confirms you are in the vein. Once you see flashback, lower the angle of the catheter almost parallel to the skin. Advance the entire unit slightly, about 2 millimeters, to ensure the catheter tip is in the vein. Hold the needle steady and advance the plastic cannula forward of the needle and into the vein. 
Never pull the needle back while the catheter is being advanced as this can cause the catheter to shear. Remember nurses, if you don't see flashback, don't advance the catheter. Either redirect or withdraw and try again. Step 4. Secure the IV. Proper securing prevents dislodgement and complications. Release the tourniquet. Apply pressure over the vein just above the catheter tip to prevent blood backflow. Remove the needle completely and immediately dispose in the sharps container. Connect the needleless connector or attach a saline flush directly. Flush the cannula with saline using a pulsatile technique, push, pause method. Observe for signs of infiltration such as swelling, pain, and resistance. Apply the transparent dressing over the insertion site. Secure with tape using a chevron technique. Label the dressing with date, time, gauge size, and your initials. Step 5. Document and monitor. Complete the process with proper documentation. Record the date, time, location, catheter size, and the number of attempts. Note the appearance of the site. Document the patient's tolerance of procedure. Set a reminder to check the site regularly using a touch-look-compare method. Monitor for signs of phlebitis, infiltration, or infection. Nurses, let's talk about some of the common issues you might encounter. Number 1. Missed vein. If you don't see flashback, don't advance the catheter. Either redirect slightly or withdraw and try again. Infiltration. If you notice swelling, stop immediately. Remove the IV and apply pressure. Rolling veins. Use firm traction on the skin below the vein to stabilize it. How about hematoma? You can apply pressure immediately if bleeding occurs after unsuccessful attempt. Phlebitis. Proper technique and site rotation can prevent inflammation. Occlusion. If the IV stops flowing, check for kinks in the tubing, position changes, or clots. Mastering IV insertion takes practice, but following these evidence-based steps will significantly improve your success rate. Remember the key points are select the appropriate equipment, find a suitable vein, use proper insertion technique, secure the cannula effectively, monitor for complications. The more you practice, the more confident you'll become. Don't get discouraged if you don't succeed on your first attempt. Even experienced nurses sometimes need multiple tries. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe for more clinical skills tutorials. In my next video, I'll be showing you how to troubleshoot difficult IV access situations. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. What's your biggest challenge with IV insertion? Let me know in the comments below and I'll try to address it in a future video. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Once again, this is Nurse Brain, inspiring greatness one lesson at a time.